All right, welcome everybody to this episode of O365A. And uh, tonight we're going to cover um, multi-language teams meeting invite controls. And this is a new feature coming to Microsoft Teams meetings. And to explain what it is and the significance, I'll, I'll pass it over to Habib. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. So, yeah, I think this is a huge um, feature that's come out, especially if you're a you know, a multinational organization or, you know, you speak more than one language in your country or even want to provide additional language capabilities for um, uh, people joining your meetings from in a specific language. Um, so in Canada, you know, we, we have two official languages, English and French. So this is a really important um, capability to provide our meeting invitations in both official languages. So um, what this uh, will allow you to do is you can um, only have two languages. So by default, everybody has, I believe it's English US, unless you've, uh, I think it's changed at the, the tenant level. Um, but now you can have a second additional language and essentially, um, you know, the way um, you will configure it is I'll pass that over to Dino to tell us how. Actually, I'll, I'll jump in and explain this. Oh, one. yeah, it's Kurt. Sorry, my bad, Kurt. <laughs> um, I love PowerShell, so here I go. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a new parameter added to the Microsoft Teams uh, meeting policy. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of parameters on it, but um, uh, when you go to look at what your setting is in your tenant or to, to set it, what you want to do is first make sure that you're running a reasonably new version of uh, Microsoft Teams PowerShell module. And to check the version, you can always do, a, uh, as it's shown here, get installed module Microsoft Teams, and it'll return the version. Um, and then what you'll do is just the connect to Microsoft Teams. Uh, we've done that already. But uh, to see what your setting currently is, you can do a get CS Teams meeting policy and just look for the, the parameter uh, language in this case. Um, and it'll pick out the parameter meeting invite languages. And that will contain the two languages that are set for the meeting invite. But it might be blank. And if it is blank, you probably haven't set it. That's the default. And if it's blank, what Microsoft Teams will do is it'll use the whatever is set for the client, whatever language the client is running in as the uh, default language. Um, as you can see here, too, there's a number of Microsoft Teams uh, meeting policies. You can set that for a specific policy and then apply that to one or more users. And it'll use the language settings um, for, for those users that the policy is set on. Um, yeah, so that, that's about it. Once you set it, in this case, it's set to uh, English and French. And uh, Michael, why don't you show us what it looks like uh, when those two languages are set? Yeah, so once uh, I have a user that falls into one of these policies, so if they have a policy assigned, you know, if, and it's set to language, I'll apply. Or if they have no policy, and then they always get the global. So once that replicates, when I create a new Teams meeting from Outlook, desktop. Uh, what will happen is we'll have our our English or whatever the first language that was set in that list uh, as the primary. And then as we scroll down, we have that secondary language. So we have that uh, kind of matching with the, the policy. So if you had English and French in our example, we have those two languages. And it's interesting, this actually supports the, the audio conferencing preview policies that we talked about on another episode. So you can see all the different bridge numbers that I have uh, in that policy as well. And we can see that that uh, is, although it was not translating the, the actual city names, it is translating the rest that, uh, around that meeting invite. So uh, definitely great to see that it's supporting that, that preview as well. Uh, in, our original, in our initial testing, it does only seem to work in the Outlook desktop client for new meeting requests. So if you are creating the meeting in the, the meetings app within Teams or in the, the web browser, you know, the Outlook on web or Outlook for web, uh, we are not seeing these uh, multi-language support uh, invites at, at this point. Uh, another thing to note, we've been waiting for this, I think on the roadmap it said since like November for rollout. So it's glad to see it's coming out uh, this month and it's uh, just starting to hit some of the tenants that we're working with right now. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> In terms of the supported languages, um, according to the Microsoft Docs, there's a whopping 54 languages that are listed here. So that's that's quite healthy, um, uh, you know, for a, a new feature out of the gate. So they're all listed here if you want to check them out. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, once again, um, you know, Michael talked about the limitations. So you can't, all this has to be done and set up through PowerShell right now, but you can't actually set any of this up in the Teams Admin Center as of today. Once again, we hope that that will change in the near future just to support um, I mean, the user community that's not so familiar with uh, PowerShell. And, you know, again, you're scheduling all of these meetings today in Outlook. So no, no mobile client support or no web browser support or nor the Teams client. So um, in order to see these uh, invites, you'll have to do it uh, in Outlook today. And again, uh, the sense is that that likely will change um, in the future uh, as, as the feature matures. Um, and with that, I'll pass it back over to Kurt. Yeah, thanks, Dino. Uh, you know, just a couple questions thinking about, about this. Uh, what happens with anonymous or external users? Do they just get the, the global default? Yeah, so it's based on the the organizer. So whoever, you know, whatever policy or Teams meeting uh, policy that's applied to the person that's booking the meeting, that's what controls the the language that's going to be consumed uh, on that invite. And then, of course, whoever you send it out to invite it, they're going to, you know, see the, the that meeting invite. All right. Um, yeah, I, I would assume that this will be supported for more more than the Outlook desktop uh, at, at some point. But uh, I know, Habib, you're saying uh, some of the organizations you work with, at least just having this ability to to set it uh, is really important for the user community, right? Yeah, like so I work a lot with the Canadian federal government and uh, we <clears throat> we tried a lot of different workarounds in order to be able to get this type of functionality to happen, like using the um, I think there's like the um, I don't know, should we, at the end of the meeting invite, there's like the meeting Footers. settings that you can apply. Yeah, you can apply a footer or a logo or help URL. Like we are trying like all these different um, ways to just even include some additional language um, along with even creating like some uh, transport rules that would take the, you know, the content and translate it and just try and, you know, um, rename some of the fields and stuff like that. Um, so I know that, you know, the uh, at least, you know, on the Canadian government side, it's going to be really well received when uh, we're able to uh, deploy this and start utilizing this functionality for sure. Yeah, we've seen like, you know, third party tools to try and like create your own uh, Teams meeting uh, based off of templates and stuff like that. Uh, it's just nice to see this kind of built into the product now. That's great. Yeah, just looking at the uh, the roadmap entry, it uh, it is scheduled to go GA this month. Of course, we're about halfway through the month, so if it's not in your tenant yet, it should be soon. And uh, the rollout has it for GCC, DoD, and all standard uh, commercial tenants. So, looks like it's gonna gonna hit all tenants. Yeah, so we should see it in the standard tenants before the end of the month. So we should start seeing customers seeing it in the next couple of days. And then, yeah, as you mentioned, GCC will probably be next month. Fantastic. All right, well, that's uh, we'll keep it short and sweet. A real important feature that's uh, going to hit people's tenants. And um, good episode, and we'll see everybody on the next episode. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.